Good evening, everyone. And welcome to today's session. Mm -hmm. Our speaker for this evening is Amin Ayana, founder and CEO of Rumi's Engage. Amin assists firms and individuals understand what blockchain is and its use cases across specific sectors. Amin, we are happy to have you. Please carry on. Thanks so much, um, Esmeralda, for the introduction. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm most appreciative that you've actually squeezed your time amidst your busy schedules to actually join the lecture. Yeah, good evening. That has to do with um, blockchain and um, marketing. As Esmeralda made mention, my name is Amin Ayana, and I'm the founder of Rumi's Engage Consulting. And I'm also a member of CIMG, Chartered Institute of Marketing in Ghana, and an associate of um, CIM, that's the Global um, um, Institute. I also volunteer as the country secretary for customer experience professional Ghana, and I'm reading my um, PhD at the University of Ghana Business School. I'm excited and I'm actually looking forward to this lecture that we are going to have. And we would also want to make it as interactive as possible. And um, that is making it really engaging. So I'm happy that you all of you are here and I'd like to begin the, the session. So the, the, the reason why we actually have in um, this particular session is to have a discussion around a technology that would enable us achieve certain things that we marketers um, we consider really valuable in building relationships. So the idea is to have that mind shift. So at the end of the lecture, we would be invoked in terms of how we'll be thinking regarding certain technologies and how that one can actually enable us to deliver on the customer experience or consumer experience that we as professional marketers, we are thriving to actually deliver. So our session is going to take this format. We would want to identify ourselves. That is who we are as professional marketers and the standards that we adhere to in delivering on um, brand promises and consumer experience. We also want to look at certain environmental um, factors that offer us setting opportunities and also remain a threat to us as professional marketers. Then also want to look at a particular enabling technology that would actually give us the tools to further deepen the kind of relationships that we have with our customers. We also want to look at what it means to have that particular technology in the digital marketing landscape. We also want to look at certain implementation challenges that we will encounter as a professional marketers, when we are convinced that this particular technology will be of benefit to us as a firm and the consumer, so other stakeholders that we are dealing with. We we'll also be looking at certain need assessments that are required when you are looking at adopting technologies because you only adopt it when there is a need for it. We we'll also be looking at certain opportunities that are available to us as professional marketers. Then we would conclude on our session. So our first slide has to do with who we are as professional marketers, because the idea is that if we understand ourselves very well and the requirements that is expected of us, we can actually thrive as professional marketers. So we take inspiration from the, the global um, professional standards by Chartered Institute of Marketing and um, reliably inform that the Chartered Institute of Marketing Ghana would soon be uploading the standards that would govern us as professional marketing marketers in Ghana. So if you look at the professional marketing standards, there are certain core, there are certain core elements that we should have as professional marketers, and that has to do with paying 
keen attention to the interest of the customer. That is customer focus. We are also we are also supposed to be interested in the insights or data footprint that our consumers leave behind when they engage with us. We are also expected to have a strategic mindset because if we have certain um, marketing activities that we are going to drive as professional marketers and actually digital leaders in our firms, it's very important that we have the strategic acumen to actually set our strategic goals and operationalize them. We also be looking at certain technical skills that has to do with the knowledge and skills that professional marketers are expected to have in specific field. And the behavioral, that is the actions and inactions when we chance upon or when we encounter the consumer needs. Our key focus will be, sorry, our key focus will be on the technical aspect of um, the skills and knowledge that is um, actually required for a professional marketer to have. That has to do with product management. And product management um, pays attention to customer focus because as professional marketers, we are expected to make sure any product that we are sending onto the market or any digital solution or technology solution that we are bringing to the market, we should be at every phase of the product development so that we we'll make sure that all the touch points of that particular product and services is actually interacting and giving the consumer the best of experience. And we'll also be interested in some of the footprints that consumers leave at our doorstep because we actually need to monitor the conversations that happened around our brand and even our, our persona. So be interested in measuring and also monitoring because we believe that the most powerful um, ingredient that consumers would have would give us is data that would assist us in tailor making the needs and their requirements. The issue of partnerships is very crucial because we as professional marketers will lead the charge for relationship building. And in building relationship, there are certain elements that are really crucial or resilient that has to do with trust and commitment. So those ones are expected to uh, for a professional marketers to have. And also in terms of the risk, the uncertainty that comes, are you positioning your brand in a very good light that if certain crises are coming, you have a robust um, contingency plan or a crisis management plan. As professional marketers too, we are encouraged to be innovative, brainstorming, ideation, having prototypes that would help us to bring certain new features or new products to meet the needs of our consumers. We also be expected to be responsible and responsible marketers. It means that you are paying attention to the ethics, you are paying attention to the, the community, the environment the consumers that you are dealing with should I be as transparent as possible in all your engagement with your customers. Creativity has to do with copywriting, your writing skills, content, marketing. Um, the content that you share with your consumers, you should be creative. And also the entrepreneurial aspect that is expected of a professional marketer has to do with, are you able to come forth or take initiations or be proactive in meeting the needs of your consumer. So irrespective of where we find ourselves, we can still tap into the entrepreneurial skills that we have. Firms pay attention to certain entrepreneurial dimension that has to do with extrapreneurship, or they call it intrapreneurship. What it means is that you can actually be working with a firm, but a firm creates a room for you to be entrepreneurial, come out with um, new products to meet the needs of your consumers. So, however, many environmental factors, we call them the change drivers, they further stretch the extent to which we should pay attention to our skills and knowledge, our core competence to meeting the needs of our consumers. And uh, we, we have categorized these changes that happens into people and industry. We believe that the consumer, sometimes they lead the change when it comes to how we deliver on our experience, and sometimes the, the nature of the industry will also influence how a professional marketer should lead their firm to building relationships with their consumers. So now in terms of the industry disruptions, there is an evident proliferation of sophisticated e-commerce platform and mobile applications. And I believe um, to some extent, 
um, most of us have had an interface or an interaction with a mobile app. And um, these particular sophisticated e-commerce platforms and mobile applications, they have brought about the concept of mobile marketing, where um, professional marketers must understand how to communicate their content and shipping it appropriately on mobile platforms and even desktop um, platforms. So Shopify, we have Haptel, which is Ghanaian, or we also have social media networks. We also have um, in the telecommunication space, we also have mobile apps that we interact with and they collect our data on daily basis. So all these sophistications in the industry, it raises certain, it raises certain concerns that we as professional marketers in our quest to be responsible, we would need to pay attention to some of the tools that we use in meeting the needs of our consumers. So in terms of the industry disruption, we also have the marketing technology when our professional marketers are, are, are supposed to understand to a large extent how technology can be used as a driver in meeting the needs of, of their stakeholders or consumers. The idea of big data has to do with the amount of data that we actually are able to collect from the consumer. And all these activities that we do, it raises issues around how, how would consumers feel when we over collect data from them. That has to do with privacy, it has to do with security, and even it comes with certain risks. So we as professional marketers, the changes in the industry is now pushing us to an extent that we actually need to pay attention to some of these technologies that are being used in our what, space or respective space. It is so interesting to see this particular data from Chief Matek. Um, that is, um, I, I collected this um, uh, some few days ago, and it shows that in terms of the technological tools that we as marketers are using to engage our consumers and monitor the activities that we have with them, the growth rate in, from 2011 to 2022 has been 6,521%. And, and this particular growth rate, it's an indicator or an indication that we as professional marketers, we must be able to check some of these marketing technological tools that avail themselves to us so that we can be able to position ourselves on these platforms, not compromising on our brand values, our missions and vision as a firm or the firm that we work with. So all these statistics shows the extent to which we as professional marketers um, the industry is, uh, is, is changing our, our behavior and um, the kind of skills and knowledge that we're supposed to acquire. So this is just a, a picture that demonstrates the number of uh, mobile apps, the number of influencer um, apps, the number of e-commerce platforms, the number of content management platforms, the number of um, customer relationship management tools that are right before our eyes to assist us in delivering the consumer experience because as part of our core um, skills we should be customer centric as much as we can so now when we come to the consumer phase that has to do with the people you we will realize that now consumers are discerning and they are able to even suggest certain activities that firms must do in order to actually help them meet their needs. So we have the concept of design thinking that is user focused. So design thinking is saying that before you even think or attempt to build a particular product, you must make sure that you go to the end user, engage the end user, involve the end user in your ideation process, involve the end user in your prototyping, involve the end user in your testing. So in, to a very large extent, you'll be co-creating with the consumer. And that one research has shown, it helps you to build that kind of brand affinity that you can have with your consumers. So also with user-generated content, to an extent, if you help consumers or you involve them in your product creation, to some extent, they would even want to be advocates and generate content that would actually endorse or validate some of the products and services 
that you churn out to your customers. There is also demands regarding issues around sustainability that firms should, um, in, their, in their quest to keep the earth safe, they should interact or build relationships with firms who are green oriented, who pay attention to um, the environment and the activities does not um, um, deteriorate the, 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 the state of the environment or the activities that not, does not pollute the environment and all that. Consumers too are looking to have a trustful relationship and um, issues around consumer protection in terms of data privacy is also something that consumers are looking out to actually see in the um, in um, the firms that they engage with and the consumers here can actually mean your your suppliers they can actually mean your partners or even international partners so now we as professional marketers the point the question that we'll be asking ourselves is that besides all these specific challenges as professional marketing that um we we find ourselves in what do we do what are some of the challenges that the changes in the the environment and the changes in the consumer behavior what are some of the challenges that comes to our doorstep because if we are customer centric that we always want to listen to what the consumers actually need then we come back to our drawing board we build the product and still go back to them and test it so that we can have the chance to reiterate certain things regarding our products to, de to deliver on the supreme experience that we want to do so the question is what are some of the challenges of these changes in the industry and even changes in the demands of the consumer so these are some of the challenges that um is before our eyes that has to do with privacy security of personally identifiable information because most of the times when you are engaging with firms they have a way of collecting your data in the essence that they actually want to meet your needs and tailor make certain products or digital products or services to you so they are tied in between a, a space where they don't know how much data they should collect or how much data they should not collect so sometimes their engagement with you can be intrusive. So there's also declining um, level of trust when it comes to relationship building, not necessarily between businesses where they would need to share certain sensitive information amongst themselves. And that one, if as a firm you are unable to determine how much information you want your, your partner to see from you, you might end up transferring your sustainable competitive advantage to your competitor so there's also declining level of trust when it comes to business to business relationship there's also evident evident trust when it's a decline of trust when it comes to business to consumer relationship business to government relationship that has to do with regulations and also government to government relationship that has to do with um, if a country wants to actually brand itself that is in terms of nation branding they'll end up um, dealing with other states to actually make sure that there are citizens who visit each other or visit the home country and the host country will have will be able to have a, a unique experience. So there's also weak regulatory Mike is going to actually mute. <laughs> okay, maybe I, I, I can continue. Um, so we also have the challenges that comes with um, advertising, where nowadays when you advertise, you sometimes question your marketing activities in terms of um, whether your content has actually arrived in the face of your your specific audience or your targeted audience so there are issues that comes with the digital advertising where we have reports that are actually sent by attackers to actually click on all the content that you are what 
they are putting forth. The, the robots will engage the content in actual sense. They are not the real target audience that are engaging. So your post might be performing all right in terms of, of your engagement rate, but you are not able to attribute that to your bottom line. There is also increasing knowledge gap when it comes to certain technological tools that are that avail themselves to professional marketers to actually use. And when it comes to the C-level um, positions, that is the chief marketing officer and other similar roles like the chief experience officer or the chief customer officer, they are trust in terms of vis-a-vis um, -vis the customers reduced was seen to be really least. That is by Edelman Research result in 2017. So now, we as professional marketers will now be asking ourselves if these particular platforms, for instance, Facebook, when you are doing your ad, you are not privy to the algorithms. How does, how, what particular mathematical formula would work best for my content? You are not privy to that. You are only giving certain best practices to go on the platform and run your campaigns. You don't know how you're supposed to position your content very well. So in that case, the results that you are getting from all your marketing campaigns, it will not be near accurate because you don't even know the formula or the algorithms on these social media platforms. So now, which particular technology would actually give us that transparency or would actually give us a platform where we can still trace our historic data our historic data that cannot be edited or be deleted. Our historic data that is immutable. Which particular technology will grant us that particular um, um, gold that is trust to have trustful um, relationships? So that particular technology, when you look at the features in terms of the trace uh, transparency, the traceability, the consensus, so that all parties involved in a relationship will come to a consensus as to how they should behave so that no single party can take charge of that relationship and behave the way that other parties will not be interested in. So this particular technology is called the blockchain technology. The blockchain technology is simply, like in simple terms, is an enabler. So we just say it's an enabler of transparency, it's an enabler of trust, is an enabler of accountability, is an enabler of history, is also an enabler of what? Collaborations. So that is what blockchain technology is. And the reason why is an enabler of transparency and someone not able to edit your information or steal your information is that is backed by cryptography. And cryptography in basic terms is just a way, a terminology, a way or a process of securing your most important data or information or contract that you have so that no one is able to actually have access to. So at the heart of blockchain technology is that particular security feature that would actually give separate parties the trust that they need to do transactions and engage with one another because all the activities that you do on this particular platform is transparent to all parties on that particular platform. All the activities you do on this platform, each party on the platform has the same amount or content of data. No one party can edit the data that they have without agreeing with all other parties on this particular platform. So because of the nature of that platform, it ensures transparency. And the transparency, when you engage in relationships, you'll be able to actually see the kind of relationship that you are having, who is involved, who can see what. There's also issues of privacy because this particular platform is giving you the ability to actually decide how much information you want all parties involved to actually view. It's also reliable in the sense that if my data, for instance, we are 
the class that we have, the, the lecture session that we have in. If my data is faulty, it doesn't compromise all the data that you guys would have in your block. It doesn't compromise the data. Each and everyone's data is a backup to what? My compromised data. So it makes the that particular platform really reliable. And I cannot change certain information on that platform without your consent. So it makes it really immutable. And so now the blockchain, because certain consumers are aware that there's actually a platform that can enhance the trust and that can enhance the transparency, that is very crucial in building consumer relationships. They are now demanding. So if they are demanding, they will be pushing us to take interest in this particular technology. Our interest might not necessarily be in understanding the programming aspect of that technology, but we are looking at what it can actually what enable. Because we, we as professional marketers will be interested in knowing how this technology works so that when products or solutions are built out of it to enhance consumer experience, we have the product knowledge and we also be able to render the support and the assistance for um, toward our consumers. So we want to be interested in that particular technology. So in the in the digital marketing landscape, these are some of the issues that we face as digital marketers. And digital advertising is predicted to grow $427.26 billion in this year. Advertising losses are expected to reach its highest, 100 billion by 2023, that is next year. So that chunk of our amount of money will be lost to fraudulent activities that we actually would encounter or we don't even know or we are not aware about in running what digital ads or what marketing campaigns, paid marketing campaigns. So, and the online advertising fraud cost companies at least, that is per IBM research, it cost at least $19 billion companies. So all these particular activities, um, it makes it very difficult for um, we as professional marketers to actually make a case when it comes to digital spending because we would need to make sure that we account for all our marketing activities, the cost involved, and even the human resource, that is the time that we invest in running some of this campaign because some of the, this campaign comes with consistency and consistency needs a whole lot of human resources and money. So now, when you look at some of these challenges, when it comes to ad buyers, so ad buyers, there's a lack of trust, there is also um, rising consumer experience. They encounter fraud when they are doing digital ads. And even for publishers, they are, they are, they are um, subjected to the risk of actually getting their consumers or the parties that they engage with, their data being compromised because the platform that they use in running some of these ads are not secured, are not secured. Most of their data are centralized and blockchain is saying that it's, it's supposed to be distributed so that all parties will know what their data is being used for or how their ads are performing. So now on an average, so you can imagine that is per blockchain council, their research shows that on an average basis, users, an average user, 50% of mobile data are consumed on what? digital ads. So when you are interfacing with, for instance, social media, or even you're on a website, the ad that pops up in terms of video and, and in terms of like text or copy, you sometimes you have to, you spend almost 50% of your internet data just to see ads that are not even meant for you. So in terms of the load times, these particular advertising that are mistargeted they are a nuisance to our what, our consumers. Google alone, when you are doing ads on the 73% of all the ad dollars, it goes to, to them. Now, if we have a particular platform that is not able to account for how we are able to 
to, to clearly or specifically or accurately target our audience, it means that we'll be spending much resources on paid advertising, but we are not actually reaching the end word consumer. So poor targeting would, um, would, 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 would affect us and would not be allocating our most prime resources to. So there are also, and these particular mistargeted ads, it becomes a nuisance to consumers and they wouldn't even want to engage with you because if your ads are intrusive and they are not meant for your target audience. So these are some of the challenges that people engage in what advertising encounter. So now there's also an issue of ownership of content. An issue of ownership of content is that now firms, when they create their content, which sometimes is very cumbersome, they are not able to take ownership of their content because their content can be copied, their content can actually be monetized at their expense. In certain instances too, when you are creating content, you as a firm might also get certain content that in actual sense is actually like is an intellectual property of um, that particular um, um, business and it's good that they know what they are going to use their data for. So it raises issues of intellectual property. So these are some of the challenges that are found in digital marketing space. So in terms of consumer protection too, so how much data are you supposed to collect as a firm? Are you supposed to collect just the email address or you should move to an extent of collecting their, their name? That's a first name, their, 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 um, their surname, their first name, their job title, where they work, um, where they live, their income bracket. All these particular personal identifiable information is also raises concerns of trust, security and privacy. And that can actually breach the trust that um, consumers would have regarding your brand. So Google and Facebook are trusted third parties and they keep and monetize our personal data and we don't know where our data goes to. So that particular platform, like the blockchain technology platform, it offers the consumer the ownership so that at any point in time, your data is being moved from one point to another. You determine to which, like to like how much data should be moved, who it should be moved to, and how long they can even keep your data. So these are opportunities for professional marketers to actually be on a platform like this to ensure trust, security, privacy when dealing with their consumers or stakeholders in their respective what, industry. So this is a clear case, case one, clear ad, for instance. If you are able to run campaigns on this particular platform, they are able to showcase how your ads are performing, who is seeing who, how much data is being transferred. And, and in terms of privacy and security issues, they are able to, to ensure that you would not take the privacy of your consumer for ransom. It's also a secured platform because we have built a particular ad um, platform that professional marketers might be interested, especially when they want to get near accurate data and near accurate targeting. The second case has to do with Lucidity. Lucidity 2 is a particular platform that is enabled by this blockchain technology to ensure that any advertising firm or any campaign that is run on their platform is able to deliver because they have the data that consumers have allowed for them to see and do their targeting. So Toyota is a clear case. Toyota worked with them. That is um, last year. And Toyota were able to maximize their um, campaign performance by 21%. This particular platform, to recall it, the BAT, Basic Attention Token Platform. This is a platform that is available for professional marketers to actually use in terms of engaging with their customers and even running, running ad campaigns. So here the user is rewarded for their attention. So if a consumer moves onto your platform to read content, they'll get rewarded for giving attention to your content. If they watch your video, they'll be rewarded for giving attention to your content. The advertiser will also be be able to 
prevent robots or fraudulent activities on your ad campaign so that it doesn't distort their engagement rate. So now this is actually the landscape of um, the, the digital uh, marketing space that has to do with um, advertising, content management. It also has to do with how, how much data you can actually keep or how much data you can share. So now, aside from that specific case, we would also want to be looking at the industries that we as professional marketers, we find ourselves, i.e. the banking space, i.e. the health space, i.e. the supply and logistics space, i.e. the educational space. So we'll be interested in knowing how this particular technology is disrupting the industries we as professional marketers, we actually find ourselves in. So when I was having a conversation with Esmeralda, I was asking how many of us belong to the banking industry or the health industry or the educational industry so that we can at least look at certain use cases of this technology and it will make more meaning to us. So in terms of remittances, that has to do with the banking space. Remittances, it delays. When you're sending money, when you're engaged in a remittance activity, it delays. The reason why it delays is that your bank, the bank that you are sending the money from, they need to get consensus of the regulator. The regulator will also need to verify certain activities and send it to the host country's bank. The host country's bank will also verify certain stuff then send it to the receiving bank and the, the receiving bank will also make certain verification and all that. So in terms of the time factor, in terms of giving the consumer the speed, the reliability, and even the cost of remittance, this particular technology is actually giving um, banking firms the platform to ensure that although they have regulators on this platform, but because that platform is very transparent, is auditable and is accountable, they'll be able to increase the speed of transaction. They'll be able to ensure the privacy of the consumer who is doing the remittance. They'll be able to increase efficiency. They'll be able to reduce the cost of transaction. And all these things are pertinent when it comes to you as a professional marketer that you are, you are charged to ensure that all the tactics of your bank, consumers are able to get the fast, the security, and also the positive experience. So if you find yourself in a, in a banking space, for instance, Central Bank of Ghana, Central Bank of Ghana recently came out with a design paper for ECD. So the ECD is actually run on a platform, blockchain platform, but the Central Bank of Ghana is not communicating that they are running their staff on and, and the blockchain platform. But that is what they're actually using to enable the security. To enable security. And Central Bank of Ghana will be selling these ECDs on on retail basis. And some of the partners that are involved in this particular um, project are banks because banks will serve as um, um, retailers to make sure that consumers are able to have access to this e-Ghana, e cities to what? Transact amongst themselves. So now you as a professional marketer, you find yourself in the banking space. So now your bank has to come to terms with the solution that has been what? Uh, proposed and the platform and the benefits of this platform so that when you're churning out your content, you are able to reduce the perceived risk that comes with this platform. You're able to communicate to your consumer. So that one can actually allow you to distinguish yourself as a professional marketer, give the consumer the customer service and advice that they need, and tell them that this platform is the most secure platform you can find around because it's on a solution that ensures transparency, accountability, and all that. And their card information, their name, their next of kin, the amount of money that they have, all these particular information would be owned by them. And if the bank wants to even use their information in making certain marketing decisions, they will be notified and their consent will be sought to actually ensure that they are able to come up with additional products and services to ensure experience. 
So these are some of the 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 insights that you as a professional marketer, if you are paying attention to this technology, you'll be able to drive the beautiful experience in the banking space. So now if you come to the educational um, um, space, the educational space comes with digital cert like certificates. So at the end of the day, students are, are expected to get the true reflection of their performances on their transcripts. Students are expected to be able to share their, their certificates to other schools that they want to attend or even their, their set, um, specific employers who ask for their award certificate. And now, in terms of the certificate sharing, posting sometimes very expensive because the legitimacy of the certificate has to be verified by parties. So you need to sometimes um, post your certificate because your certificate is not on a platform like that. An example um, is eight, like this particular this thing, um, picture or the figure is telling that eight doctors with fake certificates. And we are able to chance upon news items that discuss how people are able to forge certificates. So now, if we are able to use this particular platform, like as an institution, to have your certificates on a blockchain platform, you'll be able to ensure that immutability, no one can actually what, change their grades. Their certificates are completely and globally verifiable. The students would trust your certification processes. So all these particular um, advantages that comes with these solutions would transfer into the kind of experience that you give to your alumni and also the credibility of your what institution. So these are this is just an example of the blockchain use case in institutions. For instance, the University of Nicosia, all their certificates are issued on this particular platform and all their certificates are completely verifiable. You don't need to you don't need to um, post or have a bad experience in your journey to sending your certificate for verification. In the case of the land registry, recently our land registry engaged Ben Ben because we have enormous land litigation issues that are still pending in courts. And because um, in Ghana, we must ensure citizen prosperity, litigation issues is of utmost concern that is in delivering the best citizen experience. So the land registry now, they have their data on this enabling technology. So you are able to trace who was the owner of the land, when was it sold, to who was it sold, who were the parties involved in the sales. And this particular historic information is immutable. No one can delete it, no one can edit it. Is only append only. When you put in the information, everyone will agree that the information is there. If you want to change it, you have to initiate, you have to say that this was the previous record. Now we are changing it to this, and all parties have agreed that this is now the new owner of the land. So this particular um, technology has been used, and if you look at the interaction that now citizens have with the land registry, it's seamless. So is, is you're able to drive the citizen experience in that manner. When it comes to the medical field, sensitive data, very sensitive data, and patients' diagnosis records, very crucial. Most hospitals have that particular information centralized and is susceptible to attacks. And firms, medical firms, are not even able to trace the 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 raw materials that has been used for making the drug, the destination that is coming from, all this information is very, very crucial. Because even the time that we found ourselves with the global pandemic, because we had access to the vaccine, it was now very difficult to even trace where the vaccine is being used. So we had an issue of vaccine nationalism where certain countries hoarded the vaccines. But certain jurisdictions like the United Kingdom, they were able to actually place all the vaccine information 
on an enabling platform like blockchain. So wherever or anytime the vaccine is being used is something that they can easily see so that they'll be able to limit the journey that consumers will struggle or citizens will struggle to get these vaccines. So these are all examples of what, how it can be applied in the medicine field. In terms of research, we have certain wearables that takes our blood pressure information, our medical information, and is stored there, and that data has been monetized. We don't get ownership of that, our medical information. So if we are aware of this particular technology, in building partnerships in terms of insurance packages for our employees, we will be able to figure out firms who have their databases or who are using some of these technologies so that we will be able to deliver the word employee experience. Employees will be in charge of their data and they can actually monetize it and choose which particular um, doctor should have the information or who the doctor should share that particular sensitive diagnosis information to. So now this particular technology comes with certain challenges. When you as a professional marketer, you want to ensure transparency and, 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 and have and ensure that your end user has a really seamless experience because this technology also comes with speed. These are some of the challenges that you will encounter. In terms of standardization, because the technology is now growing and the use cases are now growing, it's, it's, it's difficult to have a standardized what, blockchain solution. Also, when it comes to the regulatory framework, some countries are yet to actually regulate the, the way blockchain is being used and to which jurisdictions you can actually extend to. Because in recent, in recent times, the use case of blockchain technology is Bitcoin. That has to do with cryptocurrencies and all that. And most central banks are are uh, distancing themselves from it and are cautioning um, and um, are cautioning citizens not to engage in some of these cryptocurrency activities. The reason being that they are yet to actually what, have a legal and regulatory framework. So this is a particular technology that is not only upsetting firms, but is also accept, uh, uh, um, upsetting what central banks. In terms of the human resources, because this particular technology, we are yet to actually um, use it um, to a very large extension, it, 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 relatively to the way we are able to adapt like social media networks and even websites. So this particular technology relatively is new and it's cost intensive because finding people who can actually um, design these particular platforms for you they, is, is, is cost involving and is associated with criminality, as I made mention, like the use case of Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, Dogecoin and all that, those ones, and even recently CD coin. Recently CD coin um, is actually a use case of blockchain technology that the Central Bank of Ghana did not issue license to that particular um, business. And now they caution the, um, the citizens to actually be mindful of engaging in such a, a scheme. The issue, there's also issue of speed and scalability because you want to, that to a large extent, once you're adopting this particular technology, you'll be able to ensure speed, you'll be able to scale it across your, your um, business unit, you'll be able to even scale it and make sure that you have a legacy system where your other partners can actually work, connect to to ensure that transparent relationship. So Although there are other um, enhancements to this platform like Lightning Network that ensures speed where a transaction can actually happen less than a second. And it's, that transaction is ver verifiable, that transaction is traceable and all that. So these are some of the challenges that would come. So we as professional marketers, we should be interested in knowing some of the challenges when it comes to you making a case for this technology in your boardroom. So now, in blockchain adapt adaptation or adoption, do you need a needs as need assessment? Need assessment is really crucial, as I made mention. So you have to look at the specific opportunities. And the language of this particular technology is that you would use it best when you are having multiple relationships. When there are more than two people in a particular relationship, then be able to build this platform 
or land on that platform to ensure accountability, auditability, traceability, and make sure that all of you have the consensus. So you should be looking at um, this um, requirement. You also, you also want to explore the feasibility and the readiness in terms of you as a firm and in terms of how the consumers are also making what demand. So you would need to take the strategic option, whether it's suitable, whether it's ready, whether you are ready or whether it's feasible. You also want to build prototypes and also test it. So you'll be testing it whilst you'll be waiting for consumers to give you feedback. You come back to the board, reiterate your solution, and now launch this particular platform. So these are some of the need assessment criteria that you must follow as a professional marketer. So now what are some of the opportunities that we can get directly as professional marketers? So now the consequences of all these stakeholder actions that we have discussed, and the point is we as professional marketers, what are the opportunities? So there are job opportunities because in 2020, the link, LinkedIn, which happens to be a really um, robust professional networking um, social media platform, um, they found out that Blockchain firms were keenly interested in finding professional marketers to actually drive their digital products. They also came to the realization that they actually is the community, is a community of consumers that have the power to accept their, their solutions. So they are actually looking for community managers who have insights when it comes to that particular technology. They were looking for content managers who can actually write their content in simple language because that technology is very complex. They were also looking at for PR professionals. They were also looking at um, like uh, marketers, like chief marketing officer who would drive this particular um, product. Some of the firms that are actually using it already, like um, Barclays, Visa, Mastercard is using it, DHL in the logistics space. They are using it. Shell is also using it in the oil space because of the kind of consortiums that happens in the oil space. So they also they want to have a particular platform where all parties or, or parties of the consortium will be able to have transparent, um, auditable, and immutable what data. For instance, Binance sponsored the African Cup of Nations. Finance are now recruiting community leaders, affiliate marketers, um, uh, the growth marketers to actually push some of their products and services. Coinbase, IBM too, they have a unique unit and they are paying attention to recruiting marketers because they want to make sure that they are able to deliver the experience toward the consumers. Because there is, we have an era of interoperability, Collaborations are very, very crucial. Artificial intelligence would help us with automation. Data science would help us with the power to analyze our data and all that. Um, Internet of Things will help us to connect with each other, but we actually need a platform to sit on. And I, AI, data science, artificial intelligence, all these particular technologies will sit on a secure platform like blockchain technology to drive the kind of experience that they actually need to give towards their consumers. So it's actually a technology that is called the Trust Protocol. And recently, MTN Ghana acquired MTN Group. They ventured into Metaverse. That has to do with um, um, the virtual world. And they actually purchased the land there. And the idea is that in that virtual world, they want to create digital bran uh, branches where consumers, when they wear their VR devices, they're able to immerse themselves and actually do certain phone shopping, replace their SIM card, do mobile money. So these are firms that are consumer oriented and they are taking steps. Even with Snapchat too, they recently um, got into that space. So we as professional marketers, we are, encountering some of these use cases of the technology and we are even supposed to what, drive the uptake of the results of this particular technology 
And the point is that we as professional marketers, we don't want to remain as so, but we want to be future proof. So because we want to be future proof, we'll be interested in paying attention to some of the changes in our space and what kind of technology is driving that change and how we can best position our firms to actually engage, build trust and ensure sustainable profit. So the case is that why wouldn't we join the train of blockchain technology to be future proof professional marketers? If all these things are happening, if our marketing resources are being stolen in the name of click frauds or digital ad frauds, and the fact that we can't build trustful relationships with our firm, and we have a tool that can enable us and actually empower the professional marketer to drive unique experiences across all touch points, why wouldn't we be interested in such a technology? At least, to some extent, we should be paying attention to it. And that is my interest to bring about the awareness of this particular technology so that we as professional marketers will be interested in it and have serious conversations around how we can adapt it, if the need be, to ensure consumer experience. So that is the end of the, 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 the discussion that I'll be having with you. And thanks for having me. You are welcome, sir. Esmeralda. <laughs> Thank so you, Ami. Please, Thanks. if you have any question, just raise your hand. I don't seem to see anyone's hand up. No questions. There, 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 should, there should be questions. <laughs> no questions, no addition. Well, as well as maybe any of um, our attenders can unmute and ask the question. Maybe they can ask the question by speaking. Uh, or typing it into the chat uh, box. So we have um, a hand that is raised. We have Mensa ban. Yeah, Mensa ban. Kind of yeah, I mean, um, not, not actually a question. I think um, it's very insightful and um, very um, good presentation. Um, I, I am only looking forward to have an experience of it just to try using the app to see how it, I mean, yes, you have elaborated much on how it works and the various platform that it can integrate, et cetera, but I'm, I'm, I'm just looking forward to really experience it and see how it works based on me, the ones that we are using in our various industries. So, for me, very insightful. I think it's an eye opener for us to be looking forward um, to be using that kind of app and getting to know it better than because I mean it, it's my first time hearing it and knowing how detailed it can work and how it can be integrated into other platforms. So for me, it's very insightful and thank you for uh, 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 coming to I mean and give us more insights on, on this topic. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mensa.
Please, do we have any other um, addition? Because the, the, the question session would actually um, make us um, engage with some of the clarities that we would want to attain. And even beyond this session, how we can also um, still connect with each other and be on the watch because this particular technology is really disruptive. So we have Eric, Jaime, Eric. Hello, uh, my name is Eric. Uh, I mean, that was a very good presentation. Uh, I really enjoyed it. My, my issue is around the, the fact that, you know, and, and like you said, a lot of the ads that we, the, a lot of the ads that are put out there are not properly targeted. And you see that most of the time they are a nuisance to, to people and then you just, it's so intrusive as well. Now, what do you think would be the best way to avoid this? Given the fact that we also projected for your, your discussion that next year, the spend in advertising online is going to even grow. How do you ensure that we don't waste all the dollars? Because everybody's moving online in droves. And, and abandoning the traditional media. Thank you. Fantastic, Eric. It's actually um, a very insightful question. So now, when we look at the use cases of um, this particular technology in terms of digital advertising, is uh, is minimal because um, if you look at the research that Gartner Insight, Gartner is actually a global research and marketing consultancy they conducted. And in terms of technology adoption, the first phase of the technology adoption will come with a lot of euphoria because people are beginning to understand that particular technology and its use cases. So that particular technology is normally, we say that stage is called a stage of disillusionment. So after some time, then you realize that people are, the bars will go down and people are now looking at some of the use cases of it. So they have, they are saying that we are actually in a case where the euphoria about it has actually gone down. And now SMEs are driving the use cases of what that particular technology. So you wouldn't actually find some of these particular platforms to engage with and do your digital what campaigns on or advertising on. So now what we are left with as professional marketers, when it comes to the digital advertising or campaigning, it has to do with we paying attention to the best practices in what in the industry. So now with digital advertising, your first point of call is for you to build your consumer persona. That is where most at times the, the trick is the building your consumer persona. Because if you don't understand your consumer very well, you can't also avoid using these platforms. If you understand your consumers well, then you'll be able to actually know how to engage them on these platforms. Because those are the tools and channels that you have available. So in identifying your customer persona, you must pay attention to their agenda. You must pay attention to their occupation. And you must even pay attention to their behavioral, or we call it the lifestyle. Psycho, psychographic, their lifestyle. So when you pay attention to all, and even the personality type of your consumers, you must also profile them. Even the unique skill sets that your consumers have in terms of whether your consumers are analytical, whether your consumers are, are problem solvers, whether they are attracted to issues of consciousness, whether they are agreeable, whether they are introverts, whether they are extroverts. So these are, these are, extensions that you can actually use in what? Mapping out who your consumer is. So when you get who your consumer is, the next step is to look at the consumer journey. How does the consumer get to you? 
in what ways? What are some of the channels that a consumer um, used to get to you? What are some of the evidences that we call it the social proof that they want to see? So you would also be interested in mapping out how your consumers get to you. So when you're able to get your consumer persona and know how they get to you and the process in which they get to you, then, then you can have a fair idea of where to put your content or where to put whatever you want them to see so that they can be able to have access to it. And that also raises issues of what? Content strategy. So when you're able to collect that particular data and all that, then now you should work your content. Are you interested in educating them? Are you interested in entertaining them? Are you interested in convincing them? Are you interested in supporting them? So the best practice is for you to have an 80-20 rule where you engage them, you educate them, you position yourself as a thought leader, you position yourself as a guide. So 80% of the time they see you as a guide and 20% of the time they see that whenever they want to make a purchase, you are there to actually guide them or reduce their pain and make whatever they are, they are doing sustainable and effective. So these are some of the best practices that we are required to do as professional marketers. And you don't go to a platform without a goal. You have to go to a platform with a goal. You want to increase awareness. You want to increase, you want to do customer service on the, that platform. So we call it social service. Whether you actually want to sell on that on this particular platform, whether the data compliance or your terms or conditions reflect you as the brand, your values and all that. So you must know all these platforms and where to actually engage. And what we as professional marketers should know is that the first point of engaging for like six to one year is a point of data collection. So building relationships on social media platform is not actually a short term goal, it's actually a long term goal. So you should have that at the back of your mind, all the data and insight that they are giving you, then you having it on your what? laptop you having it on your screen then you can what collect the data you analyze it and know how to retarget them so these are some of the best practices that are available to we as professional marketers some of the tools are best fit for our customers some are not so we should be able to make some of these first step decisions and be able to get it just right that one can save us a cost to some extent whilst we wait to see how these blockchain oriented solutions will grant us a platform to further collect data that is near accurate and we can tailor make our products and services for our consumers. Yes. So we, we, we have a hand up as well that Mesa wants to, yeah. Okay, Um. I want to come in again. I. When you started, I dropped because I was driving, but um, just to find out if a, a business wants to sign onto a, black, um, a blockchain, uh, a blockchain app, um, do you have any idea of the cost implications and what is the setup period and is there any way that the company can try? I mean, I know you marketers will sell all that it can do, but is there a trial um, a, a period for a business or an organization want to sign on to? Thanks so much, uh, Melissa, for the question. Yes, there, there are um, trials that is demonstration. They actually want to reduce the perceived risk that comes with some of these products and services. So the point is that you as a firm, as I made mention, you need to do a need assessment. If you realize that your activities that you are doing Trust is very, very, very crucial. And you are dealing with a lot of business partners. You are dealing with a lot of data collection from your consumers. You would want to be interested in looking at some of these technologies. For instance, if you need automation, blockchain technology is not actually the right place for you to be if you need automation. You want to go to artificial intelligence. And you only know that when you have done your need assessment. So when there are many parties involved, when the parties are skeptical as to how much data they want to share among themselves to deliver on the broader consumer experience or supply experience, you also need to consider that. You also need to consider the resources that you have in-house, whether they can assist the drive or the adaptation of this particular technology, or whether you need to train them. 
you also need to get programmers who would actually build the architecture for you. An architecture that at any particular point in time that they are building it, they are thinking about the consumer or the end user. So these are some of the activities that you'll be doing. And I must confess that recently, when we were introducing our three courses, that is um, social media uh, marketing professional, blockchain professional, and digital marketing and blockchain professional. When we're introducing this particular um, course or crash courses, we wanted to get a particular platform because it's an academy and it's found in the educational space. We wanted to get a particular platform where when it comes to the issuance of our certifications and all that, we'll be able to do that seamlessly and we'll be able to afford trainees the point to be able to verify the certifications with their employers. So when we contacted Blockco, is actually a, a, a baby company of University of Nicosia, which happens to be the first university to run a master's program in blockchain technology. When we contacted them, they said that in terms of the platform, the platform is going to cost us 1,200 euros. And any certification that we issue on this particular platform, we are going to pay two euros for the issuance of the certificate to our trainees. So this was a particular use case of blockchain technology. And they actually gave us the platforms. So they, they gave us about 10 euros and they gave us the platform. They gave us the username and they allowed us to upload our logos. When we are issuing the certification, our logo, the course tutor, and all the details, they allowed us to upload that and they made us to test. So we test that particular and we told them that, okay, so now when we are ready to have our first cohort, then we make the payment and actually use that particular platform. And it's a platform that no institution in this country now, per what we know, is actually using. You get the point. So these are clear cases of what, where you actually want to approach this particular solution-oriented firms who are having the blockchain um, solution tabs. You contact them, you have discussions with them, you do your need assessment, you make sure that the technology that you are bringing is informed by consumer what? Demands. Because if you don't start with the consumer and bring the solution, it will be very, very difficult for the consumer to actually accept because you, are, you might not tailor make their needs. So this is what I can say regarding the uptake of this solution. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Do we have any other question? You can join in. What's it? Uh, yeah, we still have uh, Esmeralda. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Okay. So, good evening. And my name is Elsie. Good evening, Elsie. So, Elsie. I want to find out uh, the courses you're offering. Uh, can anybody sign on, or you need some form of qualification before you can join me? The yes. one I see. Ah, okay. Regarding the, the, courses, the yes, yes, yes. These particular courses, they are actually um, not meant for someone who actually wants to understand the programming behind what the technology. So you don't need to have a programming background. All you need to have is your laptop, and you have your dedication. And if you want the blockchain one, you'll be introduced to the fundamentals and the use cases of this particular technology so that you'll be able to make a case for your company and be able to take charge and own that particular suggestion and drive it across what your company or other stakeholders. And the blockchain and the digital marketing crash course, if you have the marketing um, this thing, um, um, qualification, and you actually want to position yourself as a professional marketer who is able to work with firms who are using this particular technology and want their consumers to have a really top experience, then this particular um, course is meant for you. So you don't need to have any programming background. All you need to do is you make the inquiries, the brochure is sent to you, you make sure that it's actually what you need in that moment and you can enroll, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yes.
Yes. Do we have any other question or um, suggestion? Hello, sir. There is, is a question. Come in, please. Yes, uh, I am Charles. First of all, uh, thank you for your detailed and enlightening presentation. But my, Thanks, my question sir. is a bit of what you just said. I just visited your site, and I've realized that the the duration as you have it is three days with 12 hours. Does it mean that every day you have to do four hours? Is that the case, or it's more to it? Yes, there is more to it. There's more to it because um, it's flexible. Professional marketers who are engaged at the workplace, they would want to take it during the week. Some also want to take it during the, the weekend. Weekends. Yes, some also want to take it during the weekend. So the point is that we have a platform that when you are booking, you'll be able to choose the, the, the periods that you also wanted. The other point. So now our next initiative is to further add so many steps to our courses. So that would mean that we have extensive hours for it. So there are, there are, there are certain courses that you would use six meetings, like every weekend, you meet six times every weekend. So that's six weeks and you'll be able to, and you also be doing a capstone project because it has, it's practical. So you do your capstone project, you defend your product, you are graded before you can have your certificate of completion, yes. Thank you. We have to explore. Mm -hmm. Did, do we have other um, questions? Esmeralda. As I said, please, uh, Charles, one, one last thing, if, if I may. So also, I realized that the fee session is safe from a figure. Does it mean that as as you go along, the fee increases or it will, it will increase? Is that the case? Yes, it's flexible. It's just a range. So from that, it's just a range. It's flexible. But the, the, the most important um, um, aspect is the contact. Once you contact, is something that you can actually work with our course tutors and our course directors so that you'll be able to have that um, because they are even um, installment um, um, packages. You can decide to pay in installment and you can even decide to apply for a scholarship and that one will um, reduce the training fee. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Cassandra, kindly unmute your mic and ask your question. Your hand is up. Hello, good evening. And thank you, Mr. Amin, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Cassandra. Please, I want to find, I want to find out whether blockchain is, uh, it's an advanced uh, marketing, a digital marketing subject. Or anybody who wants to do digital marketing, would the person be, or would the person learn how to do or practice the blockchain? All right. Esmeralda, would you like to go for this question because it's about advanced digital marketing? Esmeralda. Esmeralda. I mean, yes. I didn't hear you. Yes, um, Cassandra asked the question regarding um, this particular technology. That is it um, when you are doing the pathway five that has advanced digital marketing, would these um, subject of 
blockchain technology be taught? Would you encounter it as a professional marketing in your courses? That's what she wants to know. I don't think so. Cassandra, I don't think so. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. So that means this this one is a different course altogether. If you want to do blockchain, then you have to take the appropriate steps to learn blockchain. Yes, please. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, uh, hello, sir. This is Elsie once again. Uh, I can see as part of your experience, you are um, a CIMG course author and examiner. So I wanted to find out if it is for uh, advanced digital marketing. Or... Yes, please. Advanced digital marketing. Okay, so have you written any books that we can have access to? We we are yet to publish a book regarding the advanced digital marketing that is the cost manual yes so that is yet to come up but i also believe that um you being part of um, ghana school of marketing question mg extensively students can make demands regarding um certain aspects or certain industry changes that they would want to find in their um their course or their classes or the kind of practice that they want so i'm sure that um ghana school of marketing has already created that avenue where you can be able to give feedback and those particular um new areas will be captured in the course delivery yes Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So if you lose kindly on mute your mic and ask your question. Tiffalus just left. I saw him leave. So Tiffalus leave. Um, do we have another another question? regarding the session. So these these are my my this is my contact and my email address. My name is uh, Amin at Amin Ayana on um, social um, Instagram, sorry, Instagram, Facebook, um, LinkedIn and Twitter. Yes. So we can connect and uh, continue the conversation. Okay. Thank you very much, Amin. Thank you, Esmeralda. It's been an insightful presentation and we appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Esmeralda, Director, Ghana School of Marketing. I'm most appreciative for actually giving the privilege to have this interaction with um, my senior um, professional marketers. And um, I must commend you for taking interest in this particular um, technology. And for me, it's the best thing that can actually happen in any professional marketing course in the country. And um, I'm glad we've had this discussion and I'll be looking forward to having additional engagement with you and your students. Thanks so much. Thank you. 
I also want to thank everyone who made time to attend this session. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye. 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 Bye.